Tonight on Inner Space. You're looking at about 14,000 games. 14,000 games! We witness AJ having a full-on nerdgasm over a collection of retro games. Then later... Something <laughs> snapped when I saw Pitfall. Sid Bolton reveals the moment he became a video game collector. Coming up. Video games let you be somebody you're not. They let you do super things that you couldn't possibly do in real life. Sid Bolton tells us about why so many people love to get into games. Welcome back. Last week, you may recall that AJ visited Sid Bolton's personal computer museum in Brantford, Ontario. He was in heaven because he was briefly but blissfully reunited with his beloved Amigos. I've never seen AJ so, like, disoriented but happy at the same time. Uh, but Sid also keeps what may be one of the world's biggest collection of video games in his basement. The gaming side of Sid's hoard isn't normally open to the public, not yet anyway, but we were lucky enough to get special access. I don't ever want to leave. Tell me how many video games are surrounding me here. In total, adding all the computer games we have and the console games we have, you're looking at about 14,000 games. 14,000 games! How have you managed to play all of these games? Well, I haven't. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> oh. Wicked. Oh, you're gonna die. Wrong move. <laughs> Why do you love video games so much that you, you know, devoted uh, so much of your life to collecting them and, and storing them in this manner? Well, I love computers, um, and one of the things that you always did on computers as an early age was play video games on yeah. them, right? Video games let you be somebody you're not. They let you do super things that you couldn't possibly do in real life. Mm. And I think that's why we love them so much, and I always have. But how did Sid make that giant leap from gaming enthusiast to obsessive video game collector? I really didn't have so many games in the beginning, but when somebody offered me an old game system and a bunch of games for like 20 bucks, at first I was like, what do I want that for? Yeah. And then <laughs> something snapped when I saw Pitfall. Right. Pitfall was like my favorite game when I was uh, younger. I got that Pitfall again for 20 bucks and it brought back the nostalgia. Yeah. And then I was hooked. Now, come take a look at our game room too. Just goes on and on in here. So how long am I allowed to stay? <laughs> I like pancakes for breakfast? Yeah, that's no problem. We've got uh, them. All right, good. Yeah, cool. I can make them in little Pac-Man shapes for you. Perfect. Besides showing boundless hospitality, Sid also offered a quick lesson in how to hotwire a coin-operated arcade game. So open the door, and then there's a little wire down at the bottom there where the quarters go in. There you go, that's lots of credits. Close it. There you go. Eventually, Sid plans to make his video game collection fully accessible to the public by merging it with his computer museum. Then people of all generations will be able to appreciate the joy of gaming together in a way that's becoming all too rare in the internet and smartphone era. A lot of times with multiplayer gaming, and so much of it's done online today, that we are starting to lose that element. When people come here, you're not playing online. When you're you know, playing a shooter, you're shooting the person beside you that's literally standing there. <laughs> it is fun to play games with other people. Let's play. Okay. Uh, so I've never played this game before. I don't even know what, what I'm doing. I'm an egg. Oh, is that me being defensive? So your Y button is to jump? Oh gosh, I keep falling off the edge! Score minus one. Ah! Good game. Thanks for playing. Thank you. Sid is going to be opening this up and, you know, merging it with the, the computer museum so everybody can go, and I'm going to be his first customer. Because the computer museum, to me, was cool, but I'm more of the classic ar arcade oh, guy. I know what did you, you identify with in that piece? The oh, most? listen, I identify with so many of them. I had my own personal Frogger when I was a kid. So that you I was the little you know, one, the little right? one. I was he obsessed had a whole with ton it. Of them in there. And I, of course, loved Dragon Slayer. It was the most frustrating game yeah. ever. But that's the thing about and these expensive. old games. It was games. one of the first 50 cent games, as yeah. I recall, or it may have even been 75. And cents. you just basically, you spent your money on just dying every two seconds, yeah. right? But that's the thing about these old games. So many of them were so difficult. When you think about it, I think that's part of the reason why when, when kids go and visit, as Sid mentioned um, yeah. in an earlier piece, I believe, they love kind of getting into those, which you wouldn't think that they necessarily would with all the high-tech games that exist now. Yeah. But I think they like the challenge of it. Well, they're hard, and I mean, they're not, they're certainly not open world either. No. Very two-dimensional. They're very one screen, most of them. But I, I, you know, if you follow me on Twitter or we're friends on Facebook, uh, and if we're not, please remedy that. 
Um, I got like a cocktail style arcade game with 48 classic games on it. Just last night I was playing Frogger and Burger Time for like Burger time. two hours, some Galaga. But you're right, they are, they're deceptively hard games. Donkey Kong, reputedly one of the hardest games ever invented yep. in terms of getting from levels. So it's but so it's cool so, to see like Arkanoid in that museum yeah. too. Like, so awesome. rewarding too when you actually do like clear level or get ahead yeah. in those types of games. Did you have a favorite like back in the arcade days that um, you both were part of? You know, I, I, I was like into uh, Pac-Man, Ms. Pac-Man. Ms. Pac-Man? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you? I like Pac-Man Jr. I really like Donkey Kong 3. I think it's an underrated game. And Galaga. I'm a Galaga master. You're a Galaga I master. To, like, That's what I hear. 20. Why don't you invite me over? Can I, can I play your little tabletop oh. crazy? <laughs> You're breaking up. Oh, I see. Mail. We're going to play it like that. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. But tomorrow on the show, if you're a fan of Doctor Who, definitely tune in. We're going to be featuring some awesome Dalek builders in Kitchener-Waterloo. They build the iconic Doctor Who villains in an airplane hangar in Kitchener-Waterloo. It's awesome. And I encountered some Daleks. And let's just say I piloted one. I'll you leave survived. The rest you're here. I, I was not exterminated. I want to hear the story. Okay. And well, at TIFF, I sat down with the cast and crew of Hotel Transylvania to find more about the animated comedy hitting theaters this Friday. It's great. I yeah, are you excited it. for this one? Yeah, you well, saw you know, it. I saw it. I really enjoyed it. I think it's, I mean, it's definitely geared towards little kids and families, but it's a lot of fun. But it, does it have darker themes as well, like so many of these? Not really. No, it's fun. It's just a fun romp. It's just fun. All right, everyone. Thanks for joining our fun romp. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, 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 o